Hi. Hi, and welcome. Today I'm going to be doing some watercolour painting. That's not unusual around here, um, but I've got some simple mark making exercises that I'm going to do and I hope that you're going to enjoy them. These are perfect if you're um, just getting started with watercolour or if you're just looking for something relaxing and calming to make that's going to make you kind of a lovely end product. So I've got some watercolour paper, I've got some masking tape, I've got my little set of watercolour paints here, um, I've got a brush, I'm using a pointed round brush today, kind of a medium sized one, um, and then I've got some water and a paper towel. And that's it for today. In fact you could skip the masking tape if you want and just go straight to working on paper. But I'm going to take mine down uh, just to keep it nice and flat and keep it all in place and to give me a nice border around my final painting. So I use kind of any masking tape but uh, what I do before I stick it to the paper is I always stick it to the table first. Uh, that just helps take the worst of the stick off it so that when I take it off the paper it's not going to rip. Sometimes it still does a little bit but you know if I've done this first at least I've tried and it might depend on what kind of masking tape you've got, some's more sticky than others. down. So for my first design all I'm going to do is circles. Really really simple. I'm just going to get my brush wet and just apply some water onto the colours I want to use today. And then when the water's been sitting there just a little bit I can take some on my brush. I can take it to the palette if I want so I could use this bit up here, um, wrong colour there that bit there and I can have little sections in different bits of the palette or I could go straight to the paper with it. I might use some Payne's Grey it's quite an intense colour so I can add a little bit more water to it and then take off the excess just scrape the edge of the paintbrush against the the palette or the pan just to make sure that I don't have a big glob of uh, paint sitting on the end because that's going to interfere with the circles I want to make. And then I'm just going to start in a corner and use the tip of my brush and paint a circle. Really simple. I can get a bit more paint Go in, paint one next to it, and then this one's going to go off the edge. And then I'll have one going off the edge up here as well. And then I think I want to change my colour. I'm going to go for this perylene green. Just make another little circle next to that one. I can add some water onto my brush but again scrape the excess off on the side of the, the pot and just end up with a kind of a watery, a more watery colour. It's not actually any lighter but as you add more water and you get less paint on your brush you will find that the colour gets lighter as you keep painting. Paint this bit here. My purpose today is to fill all of this page with colours that blend from one to the other. So while this green is still wet I want to work into it and I've got some of this colour in my palette. It's already dried a little bit but I can add some more water into it and it will come back to life and I can just pick a little bit up and every time I'm checking the brush and checking I've got a nice fine point still there and I can start painting more circles next to these ones. 
I want a little bit more intense colour now. So I've gone straight into the pan that's had the water sitting in it. And actually I can see my some of my edges are a little bit rough using that. So if I just dip into the water, I'll just water that down a little bit. Still nice intense colour. But it just moves a little bit more easily on the page. go. Now this bit's still wet and this bit is just drying over here. So I just want to go back into this area here before it all dries and just keep that paint moving. This is a good exercise for learning to work quickly and for testing out what your paintbrush can do. Now I've got just some water on my brush. I've just cleaned my brush off and it's just got water on it. And when I paint it into this area here, the paint that's still wet will just bleed into that area. Let's go for the green again. Let's try, let's try a different colour. I've got a kind of a dark brown here. This is sepia. Let's put that in there next to the green. And I'm just gonna keep going, keep changing my colour and keep changing the intensity of the colour as well. So sometimes I'm going for really deep colours and then sometimes I want a lot more watery ones. And if I keep working quickly, I should be able to allow the paint to run between the different areas and I keep moving around. That's why I started in a corner so that I can move this way and that way. It's harder if you start in the middle because you've got to kind of work out all different ways. So I'm keeping an eye on my paint and how wet it is. And if I see an area starting to dry, like maybe this bit up here, I can come in with some more paint on that area. Oh, a bit too much there. I had a big drip on the end of my brush. and just keep going, adding more colours and allowing them to blend together. And as you're doing this, you're just learning about how your brush works, about how to control your brush strokes and about how to yeah, and about how the paint functions when it's wetter and when it's drier. See this bit here is drying now. So I'll keep going with this one, I'll fill this whole page and then I'll come back to you with the next exercise. So this isn't quite dry, so I'm going to be very careful taking the tape off, but I want to get started on the next one, so I'm a bit impatient. As I take the tape, I just take a little corner and peel it back slowly and just check it's not ripping the paper. If it does, I can stop and start again from the other end. But just be gentle with it. I am using cotton paper and I find that doesn't tear quite as much as cellulose paper. So that helps as well, but it is more expensive. So you may not want to use it just for a, a little exercise. I 
For my second exercise, I'm going to be doing some shapes. So I think I'm going to do triangles. This is an exercise in learning how to kind of paint a shape and to control your edges. So I can paint two lines and then a third one to close it off and then fill that in. Now my shape doesn't look very triangular, so I can use the point of my brush to neaten it up. And because I'm not worried about whether this is the right size or not, I can make it bigger, bring it out a little bit more, and neaten up the edges like that. So I want some straight lines that come to a point. And I take a little bit of time to get that looking nice and neat. And then what I want to do is I want to take a slightly different colour and draw another triangle next to it. Now I want these to join, but I'm going to start out just roughly blocking in a triangle near it. And then again, use the, type, the point of my brush to neaten up the edges to try and make them nice and straight. Go out to a point and then I can expand it to bring them together. And as I bring them together, because the paint is wet in both, I should get a little bit of a nice bleed in between the two. Let's change my colour again. And then I'll do the same here. So I'm going to join onto this triangle here, eventually. So I'm putting in a rough shape and then I'm using the point of my brush to neaten up the corners, the edges. And then eventually I'll extend it so far that it touches my original triangle. Now I could paint another triangle across here and join these together. Or I could try and make all of my shapes and voids triangles. So if I painted across here, if I painted a line across there, I'd end up with this four sided shape and I don't want that. So I'm going to block in roughly a triangle here and then down here and here. Let's fill that in. You can see I'm not touching yet any of these points, but now as I refine it, I can touch it to the triangles it's intended to meet. There we go. And now I've got this little point here where I can make a triangle in here. Let's make this a nice long one like that. So a rough triangle and then use the point of my brush to neaten up the lines, to draw them out and to join it to the other triangles. Now this line here, I've gone a bit wonky, a bit wobbly. So that's gonna need a little bit of sorting and I can go back into this triangle because it's still a little bit wet and try and neaten that off as well. So again, I've got two sides of a potential triangle here. I can put in a third one along there, kind of roughly. Draw the other two sides of my triangle, roughly block it in. You can see it's a bit messy. And then I go in neatly with the tip and side of my brush and I'm turning my hand so that it's the best angle for the line that I want to draw. Right, I'm going to fill up my whole page with triangles now.
third exercise I'm going to do some layering. So I want some nice kind of dilute colours. So some of these areas are going to be too, too strong, so I can just add a little bit of water in next to them. So this green again. And then actually that's not bad, that's okay as it is. So I want some kind of fairly light colours to start out with and I'm going to make some circles. So I'm going to dot these randomly all over the page. I want to make them roughly about the same size but I'm not worried too much if they're a little bit off. Just like I did with the triangles I can use the point of my brush to try and get them nice and round I always start out by kind of putting a little blob of paint that's a little bit smaller than I want my final circle to be and then uh, and then I can refine it later. So let's change my colour. Let's go for a green and put the green here. So again a rough circle to start with that's a little bit smaller than I want it to be and then I can take my time going round the edge with my brush just trying to make it nice and round and circular. We'll do a blue one And I'm going to keep going and filling the page until I've filled as much of the page as I can without overlapping them. Now some of my little spots are still wet and some of them are dry. The ones that are dry I could go over and paint again. So I want to do some layering with this. So I want to paint some of the spots over the tops of ones that are already there but I don't want any bleeding so I want to really make sure that they're properly dry before I go in and paint over the top. So I've got one here, I think I can paint over it. This one is maybe slightly wet in the middle. I mean it's not wet wet, I can touch it, I'm just wondering if it's a little bit cool. So I'm taking a risk going for it and I'm putting my little spot in here and then I want to overlap these areas. That's looking okay. Right, I'm going to keep going, but again, before I paint over a, a spot, I want to really make sure that it's dry. And while I'm waiting for more spots to fill up where I can fill in the, in the um, these areas here, these gaps here, I want to paint over the tops of the ones that I've already put in. So I can use the paint that's the same kind of um, consistency or maybe a little bit thicker and just paint another layer over the top and what I want to get is some concentric, some concentric circles. So I've got a blue one here and I can paint a blue bit over the top here that's quite dark, so maybe I'll add a little bit more water into it. And what I want to do is to create a smaller circle inside my bigger circle. And try and get it as neat as possible. It's not always possible. And I think that's a little bit dark in the middle, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paper towel 
and just press into the centre there and I've picked up some of that paint and I'm just going to smooth the rest out with my brush so it's nice and consistent. Quite often when I'm painting I like areas that are darker and then lighter but with this I want my uh, I want each area that I paint to be nice and flat and even and I want the contrast to come from the layering. So I'm going to keep going um, where I can add a big spot in the middle of two, two or three spots. I'll add that and where I can't I'm going to go to areas that I think are dry and add a second layer into those places. So this one's green so let's add a second green spot on this one. these areas because they're all something a little bit wet around there. So I'm going to go into my dry spots, the ones I painted first, and add yet another layer of colour onto there and making it a little bit more intense this time again. So I think three layers on each spot and that'll be really interesting and fun painting. Again, I think that's maybe a little too dark. Something a bit more like that's better. Right, now what else can I paint? I can paint that green one. So with this exercise you're learning quite a few things. You're learning about the brush control, similarly to what we did with the, uh, the triangles. You're also learning about layering colours and how they mix. This is a really fun exercise to do if you wanted to pick three primary colours and then you could see how many secondary and tertiary colours you can make by layering the different colours together. You finish painting give your brush a good swoosh in the water and just check that all of the color is taken off you can reshape the point if it's not nice and pointy and then place it somewhere to dry so here are my three simple watercolor exercises for when you're looking for something to do that's calming meditative that will teach you some skills about watercolour and give you some things to practice. Plus I think they make really cool artworks in their own right. I think they look really good on a greetings card or something like that. I'm sure you can find lots of uses for these. So thanks for watching today. I really hope that you've enjoyed this. If you like the video then please give it a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more from me then do subscribe to the channel. If you want to share your work with me, um, you can post your work to Instagram and tag me at Lou Rachel Davis. 
I do love seeing everything that you've made following my tutorials over there. So thank you. Take care. Bye bye.